Hi, welcome to the Northern Illinois University Computer Science 463 Spring Semester 2021 course. My name is John Winans and I'll be your instructor this semester. Let's start by showing you where everything is. So the first thing you want to do is go to find the Department of Computer Science homepage, which is www.cs.niu.edu. Then you click on About, Faculty and Staff. Scroll down till you find me. I'm John Winans right there under Instructors. And then it says, here's my office and whatnot. But during these uh, pandemic times, I will not be in the building. Uh, this is my office right here, the website with my faculty page right here okay so come on down find the course we're taking which is 463 for the spring of 2021 click on that and this is the main page for this particular course i strongly recommend you bookmark this page and come back here and check it from time to time because it will be updated uh frequently you you don't need to be uh, respectful when you send email messages, right? You got to be clear and meaningful subject line. If you don't, your mail will probably get lost uh, in spam and stuff like that, and make it hard to respond to in a timely manner. You do need to uh, indicate what course you're enrolled in and what section number. Otherwise, we can't answer questions that have to do with, you know, when is the next assignment due or things like that. Uh, which, by the way, you shouldn't be asking anyway, because the answers to those questions are posted on this website as soon as they are known anyway. But the point is, you need to provide context, otherwise a lot of the questions that get asked cannot be answered. Um, and, of course, make sure that you don't send things that look like spam to various mail filters, otherwise we won't even get your email at all, and vice versa, right? We are familiar with that problem, okay? So be courteous is, uh, is what you uh, need to do there, as well as down here. If you need help uh, with code debugging, you're probably going to need us to send us your code. Don't ask what's wrong with my program and then not send you any code, right? I mean, these are just, you know... Uh, keep <laughs> a little courtesy when you're sending email to cut down on the amount of time uh, that would otherwise be wasted going back and forth and back and forth asking for the missing pieces. Always provide context and discuss what the problem is and why you believe that to be the problem. Otherwise, we could get lost uh, and investing time in a wild goose chase, as they say, okay? Now, if you have trouble with C++, it turns out that I posted a lot of videos to a course I taught recently, Computer Science 501, which during pandemic times and disruptions and things turned into something that's very similar to 241. And uh, all, all the, the notes and lectures are right here, so you can go back here, and if you need prob uh, you know, Oh, I forgot how stack frames work in GDB or something like that. There's a bunch of lectures in here that you may find useful, okay? So I throw that link on there uh, just as a courtesy to you. The instructor is me. Office hours are uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, 8 until 11, all right? And you can send an email, set up an appointment if you're not available at that time or that doesn't work for you. Once I know what the TA's uh, contact information is going to be for this course, I will post it here. Our office hours will be held in Microsoft Teams on the university's uh, configuration for that stuff, okay? Uh, of course, information, you're responsible to read and know all this stuff. The syllabus is posted right here, and in here you'll find things like, uh, you know, how the grading of the course works, a 90, 80, 70, 60 scale. You have to have an overall passing, you know, weighted average grade of all the assignments in order to pass the course. You cannot get by, in other words, by getting an A on the exam, an A on the quizzes, and not doing the homework. You will get an F, okay? The same thing's true about the exams. You have to not fail the exams. You can't get by passing all the homework assignments and the quizzes and then flag the exams of course they're worth enough of your grade where well, that's not really possible anyway but the bottom line is you have to pass uh the programming sections and the exam sections in order to get a passing grade okay uh there is no real attendance this is an asynchronous online course but you are responsible for anything that happens in any of these lectures i mean that just makes sense right uh, as far as exams go, uh, the, the exact dates will be posted in Blackboard at least a week before the exams take place. Uh, the final exam will be during finals week. Uh, because this is asynchronous, the, the rules are vague. I asked exactly how final exams are scheduled. If they're like they were last semester, then we just uh, uh, can choose to put the final at the beginning of the week and uh, offer it on that first day or whatever works out, okay? 
Uh, the midterm will probably be during week number eight. Again, all this will be posted and dates will be announced in Blackboard and so on when the time comes. Programming assignments, okay? Uh, all over this website, <laughs> there's comments about the fact that your programs are solely graded based on its ability to compile and run on hopper.cs.niu.edu. It does not matter if it works somewhere else. That doesn't matter, okay? The assignments are write a program that will build and run on this machine and that does something according to the assignment handout, okay? Uh, the TA will grade your assignments. If you have questions about your grades, ask the TA first. Feel free to carbon copy myself so I know what's going on if things ever get escalated up to me to resolve something that, that uh, you know, that, that can't be uh, determined between the, yourself and the TA. In other words, if it's not just a simple error in data entry or something, then, then I may have to uh, make, a, make a final call on this whole thing. Uh, keep in mind that if somebody is uh, asking for something to be regraded and and the regrading is done, I may raise, lower, or leave the grade alone, okay? Late assignments. Uh, after talking to students in, in, in the student evaluations, this has been adjusted a little bit. You'll you lose 10% of your final grade for each 24-hour period that the assignment is late, Okay. And uh, nothing will be accepted after 48 hours, okay? So you're going to lose one letter grade if it's one day late, another letter grade if it's two days late, and then you'll get a zero if it's more than two days late. If you have a, a reason to have to need an extension of some kind, illness or something like that, you must contact the instructor before the assignment's due. Uh, no agreement to accommodate uh, some sort of a late submission on one assignment shall be considered an agreement that will apply to all the other assignments. In other words, you can't fall behind on the assignment one and then expect to stay behind the rest of the course, um, at least not without permission to do so, all right? You, and you're going to need a, a pretty reasonable uh, uh, excuse to do something like that. Um, on some more notes, you know, this is a 400-level class. You're expected to be able to write programs that, that compile and run. If it doesn't compile at all, you're going to get zero points, simply because it can't be graded. Uh, here's the criteria, how we grade your uh, uh, homework assignments. Again, uh, student evaluations and discussions uh, led me to change these numbers. I'm giving even weight this semester to your output, your coding, and documentation. All three of these are important. Documentation is actually critically important if you're actually going to write a program that you expect anyone to even use, okay? So uh, it, it, if you don't document your code, the best grade you can get is a D, right? So, you know, be aware of what you're doing and, and do a respectable job. Make your work look professional, all right? If you have questions, contact your TA or myself. What well, about your computing accounts? The university has you set up with an account that you use to get to places like Blackboard, or if you're on campus, you use it to log into wireless networking. That's the section up here discusses that. If you have a problem accessing Blackboard, your ID or your password doesn't work or something like that, you call the IT service desk at this phone number down here. All right? I, I can't create or, or adjust any passwords for anything on campus. I'm not a system administrator. So if you have university uh, access problems, there's the phone number to contact for that. For the Unix computing accounts, for your homework and for handing them in and stuff like that, you have another account. They both use your ZID number, but the password for Turing and Hopper and who to contact for that is different than for the rest of the university because this is run by the department as opposed to the university as a whole, right? So these two machines is where you're going to be doing your homework, and this will make more sense. If you don't know anything about this right now, don't worry about it. Uh, come back and review this later after we look at assignment number one, which is basically an exercise of accessing these machines and handing in a test assignment. If you cannot access these machines because your password's broken or something like that, these two email addresses here are the direct access to the two system administrators that manage the accounts and the passwords on these two machines, all right? So that's how you contact for if you have trouble accessing those. How to get help, you know, talk to your TAs, talk to myself, uh, but again, this is, you know, this is a 400 level class. You know, we will uh, 
we're trying to teach you something, all right? Don't expect us to be a consultant that just fixes and debugs your program and gives it back to you. This is about teaching you how to debug your own programs, all right? Uh, accessibility, if you need an accommodation of some kind, uh, contact the DRC office at this address here. And for those of you that don't know what this is, normally on campus we have, you know, uh, you know uh, accessibility uh, commitments to provide access for things like wheelchairs or maybe a seeing eye dog or something like that. And the students generally will disclose that they need that so that we are making sure that the room is set up correctly. I don't know how this really applies when we're online, uh, but if you need an accommodation of some sort, contact the DRC office at this email address or this phone number here. Uh, cheating. Uh, don't cheat. It's absolutely not tolerated. Okay. The university goes on about plagiarism and cheating. And if you're caught cheating on any homework program, you're going to end up with a zero on the assignment and you'll lose uh, a letter grade or, or, or fail the course, depending on the severity of what's going on. Right. Uh, a little note about willful and malicious sabotage to the computer systems, networks, and things like that on campus. Technically, this is a federal crime. These are government machines, right? You could be in violation of Illinois and federal laws in addition to just upsetting the university. Uh, you're going to end up in trouble if you do things like that. So don't do it. Um, and you also have to be concerned a little bit about people stealing your work, okay? Now, we're not on campus, so things like leaving a laptop open and someone stealing your files by physical access is generally not as big a deal as it is when we're all on, on site. But, you know, if somebody steals your work and hands it in, then, you know, what are we supposed to do? We have two copies of the same thing for all intents and purposes, and uh, that's cheating, and you'll end up in trouble there. So wh wh what is the point here? Well, protect your files, all right? It's your responsibility to make sure that you're not posting everything publicly and uh, giving your stuff away or screwing up your permissions on Turing and Hopper to let world uh, readable access to, uh, to be given to all your files. All right, be responsible. That's all there is to it. If you believe that your work has been stolen or something for some reason, let me know right away so that we can uh, deal with it before it turns into a real problem, okay? Now, this is not to say that, that you shouldn't be talking to people about your code or Googling around and things like that. Just don't cut and paste your program out of somebody else's homework, okay? You know what cheating is. Don't do it, all right? Now, I have to also point out there have been a number of cases of students expressing confusion, why I don't know, of things like, I didn't copy this from a student, I cut and pasted it off a website. That's the same thing. Either you figure out how to solve the program and write your own program and hand it in by yourself, it's your own work, or it isn't, okay? And if it isn't, it's cheating, okay? I don't want to go into this anymore. You know the difference, or you should by now. It's your responsibility not to cheat, okay? I'll we'll talk about how to hand in your homework assignments and how to use PuTTY and things like this when we talk about assignment one. I'll have a specific video for that that I'll post uh, separately. Um, I will also talk about evil file names and, and things like that in that video as well. Doc standards we'll get back to in a second. And then there's Blackboard. If you don't know what it is, don't know how to use it, the university has a nice website set up over here that talks about, you know, how things work, what it is, why it is, if you've never used it before. You'll get email from me with links that talk about Blackboard. And if you if you really don't know anything about it and you can't figure it out, send me an email and I'll show you where it is and uh, you can log in with your Z number and look around and figure it out, okay? Uh, let's get back to documentation standards. These are very important to me. Uh, a lot of students that ignore this lose a lot of points. As you saw, you could end up with a D by not documenting your code. Your code is supposed to have a doc box like this at the top of it with your name and the you know, assignment number and stuff like that in it. This web page here is a copy of the one from 241. I just, you know, copied it over, changed some names and things like that. Talks about how to line up your code and indentation tabs, spaces, and things like that. And at the very bottom, there's an example of how to use these Doxygen-style doc boxes, which if you've ever written Java before, is just stolen from 
a system called JavaDoc, okay? This is very important. You need to do this, and you need to do it correctly, or Doxygen won't work. You can't reformat this. You don't, you don't like at param, and you change it to something else. It won't work. This is actually part of a programming language that recognizes very specifically this slash star star as a beginning of a Doxygen comment box, okay? What goes in here is consumed by this system that builds uh, formal uh, um, documents that talk about how your functions work. So you need to document your parameters according to that set of rules. Here's an example of a function here with a couple of arguments in here and the parameter doc for them, and just as a sample of how you're supposed to do this. If you really can't figure it out at all, then go read the doc on Doxygen itself. It talks about how these comment blocks work. It, said, you know, it talks tons of different languages that it supports. You're going to probably run into this in your future professional life. If not Doxygen, another system that works just like this is probably going to be in use by your employer eventually anyway. So this is the style of the comment block that I just showed you. I took one liberty and put a long line of asterisks on this bottom line simply because it is not illegal to do so in Doxygen. I would like to, but I generally don't put a long line of asterisks on the top line because this is a specific command in Doxygen, like I said earlier. There's ways to configure Doxygen so that it could deal with a box that looks more like this, but that's a more of a custom thing that uh, is not generally standard. Uh, we won't be doing that for this course, all right? So point is, these are what your doc boxes should look like. Go ahead and look at the Doxygen doc for what this return and the note and the bug and warning stuff are all about, okay? I'll try to post a lecture on how to use Doxygen itself after I do this video as well. So you can get some more feel for why it's the way it is and why, why I believe it's so useful and why you should know about it, okay? Uh, again, make sure your stuff runs on Hopper. Otherwise, you know, we can't test it. We can't grade it. It'll fail when it builds, and you'll end up with a zero. Read the syllabus. We mentioned all that. Okay, tentative schedule down here, right? If something happens and we're in the middle of a pandemic, there's riots, there's all kinds of stuff going on. If the semester is disrupted, uh, this may shuffle around a little bit. Something might fall off the bottom if we fall behind, okay? It, it, it's just the way things are right now in the world, okay? The assignments will end up being posted here. Here's your first one. I'll have a video that I walk through this in, in very specific detail to make sure everybody knows how to do this, how to access these machines and get your work done as, uh, as part of this course. That lecture will be uh, right down here. It'll be linked to right there. Okay, so after the assignments will be the video lectures. Um, the introduction video right here is what you're watching right now. If you're bored, you can speed this up or slow it down if I'm talking too fast. Uh, on uh, YouTube, I go. there's a little video in here where I play around with the speed controls. If you don't know how to do that, uh, check this out, okay? Now, uh, after this, you'll see other links to other lectures and uh, things that I reference in the lecture, like if there's a website I open up in there or mention something, I'll put web links down here so you don't have to figure it out from the videos, okay? And if we go back to the, uh, uh, the, the schedule, you'll see that Boolean Algebra is the next uh, lecture that you're going to see. There's a handout in here that I walk through in this video as I explain how various things work. Again, web links. Uh, some of these items in here are posted review lectures. These are links to the lectures from the 501 videos that I showed you above, okay? It turns out this is a topic that a number of students have come to me over the years in office hours and needed a lot of help with, all right? So I'm going to try and save you a huge amount of time by just posting them right here. Am I going to give you exam questions on this stuff? No. Is it going to be necessary for the homework? Absolutely. So as a favor to you, I'm going to stick them right here so that they're right in your face so you can find them really easily, all right? Um, here's the lecture that I'm going to try and do on Doxygen. It'll be a uh, link to the video right here, okay? And so on. It'll just keep on going like this as the semester goes. I'll add more videos as they are prepared. Uh, it looks like I have the first two weeks where the video is posted right now, so you can get started on the class. So hopefully that gives you a toehold on where everything is and how to use it so you can get rolling on the course. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.